This is a list of movies that I know that are objectively bad, but I enjoy them anyway. Here's a list of the best bad video game movies. <laughs> This movie is an interesting one. I almost consider not having it on the list because I kind of consider it to be a good, good movie, not a good, bad movie. Currently has a rating of 29% on Rotten Tomatoes. People were confused by a plot that drew heavily from the game's lore. But I am familiar with the game's lore, and I think the movie is amazing. I saw this movie on opening night, and I yelled Leroy Jenkins as the movie started. No one laughed. They're filthy normies. You know it's funny. This is a fun, action-packed spectacle. Those expecting something akin to Lord of the Rings would be disappointed. This is high fantasy, Fast and the Furious. There's action. There's sexy orcs. There's even sexier orcs. There's elves, griffin, orcs, and dwarves. This movie is fun and entertaining and has an awesome soundtrack to boot. Nine. This movie is boring. Too much of it takes place in the present with very little ass-assing. There's a lot of interesting themes here, such as is violence genetic and so on, but they're just set pieces and they're not really expanded upon. And despite all of this, I enjoyed this movie. Michael Fassbender is excellent. I love it when he plays unhinged characters. He does it rather well. I mean, can't you just imagine this guy playing Hannibal Lecter? I think his performance is so fascinating that it helps me through the boring spots until we get to the action. And the action in this film is certainly cool. It's well choreographed and it looks amazing. The stunt team did an amazing job. Eight. This movie was hyped up leading to its release. The main character, voiced by Ming-Na Wen, was even on the cover of Maxim Magazine. This movie was created by Columbia Pictures and the newly created Square Pictures, a division of Square that solely focused on creating animated CGI films. Something the film is very proud of, as you can see here. Also, Palm Pilots. The dialogue often leaves a lot to be desired, and a lot of the characters have trouble with facial expressions. And the worst thing of all is that they took the magic out of Final Fantasy. Literally. There's no magic here at all. It's basically just space marines fighting ghosts. Needless to say, longtime fans of the series were disappointed. But back in 2001, I had never played a Final Fantasy game, so I had no point of reference. So all I saw was a cool CGI movie with cool special effects. I can say, however, though there's no magic or anything that resembles Final Fantasy cosmetically in the movie, the themes of Final Fantasy are alive and well. The theme about protecting the planet and the planet being nearly destroyed by the ignorance of man is very Final Fantasy-esque. And though a lot of the animation can be weird, I mean, look at this camel toe. What? The film is groundbreaking and doesn't exactly look ugly even by today's standards. It has its issues, but it's worth giving a chance. Seven. Honestly, I enjoyed these more than I enjoyed the live action movies. But these movies still suffer from a lot of the same issues as their live action counterparts, such as being extremely cheesy and the film sacrificing logic for the sake of looking cool. But I love these movies because they're cheesy and sacrifice logic for the sake of looking cool. In my opinion, the greatest advantage these movies have over the live action ones is that they take place in the same continuity as the games, and oftentimes are used to bridge the gaps between installments. Because this is in the same universe as the game, you get familiar characters and monsters. But also, because it's animated, when they do those physics-defying stunts, they look amazing. As mentioned before, these movies are cheesy. Some lines miss their mark, and some are too over the top, but all of this is kind of par for the course of Resident Evil. The games, even the ones that are considered to be among the best, are filled with their share of cheese. So it more than fits in the movie. Six. Oh no, not that one, but this one. This one is insane. I don't even know where to start. How about the fact that Robotnik accent changes multiple times during the movie? The outer world, the one you live in, is known as the land of the sky. Need to take this with you, Tails. It's a navigator. <laughs> you fell from my trap. You came all the way here and now you'll die here. Good. At this rate, the land of the sky will only last a few more hours. Or the fact that they show a teenage girl breastfeeding. There's just so much stuff happening in this movie and it's crazy. And I read the Sonic comic books, so I know just how crazy Sonic can be. The voice acting in this movie is certainly a choice. Everybody stand back. Nobody try to help me. I have to destroy this imposter. And I didn't know Knuckles could fly. This is just insanity, but in a charming kind of way. The movie introduces new characters as if we're supposed to know them, such as those iconic characters from the game, Sarah and Old Man Al. Yeah, them. Actually, what is it with Sonic movies and introducing Owl characters? The movie teeters on absurd, and I kind of love it. 
It's a great example of so bad, it's good. Five. I mean, you knew this movie was going to be here. Jean-Claude Van Damme plays the Lightning American. Need I say more? Okay, fine. How about the fact that Capcom wanted Van Damme? They put up most of the budget for the film, so they were in a prime position to make demands, which led to the film being on a tight schedule. They only had 10 weeks for the shoot. And to make matters worse, according to the director and Van Damme himself, he was coked out of his mind, spending $10,000 a week on the habit. So to help him to get to set on time, the studio hired a Wrangler, who was just a bad influence on Van Damme, so he just ended up doing more coke thus doing the exact opposite of what he was hired to do. And all of this insanity behind the scenes translated to the screen. The movie is ridiculous and funny in places it's not meant to be funny. And it's the best live action Street Fighter movie we've got. And then there's Rod Julia as M. Bison. He gave his all to this role because his kids wanted him to do it because they were fans of the game. Julia shines on screen despite the fact he was sick and struggling with stomach cancer. He's genuinely the best part of this movie and has one of the best lines. The day Bison graced your village was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. Also, this is the second movie on the list starring Ming Na Wen. Four. Yes, I know a lot of people love this movie, but I mean, the acting is bad. The special effects are bad, even for the time, and I genuinely get angry when Shang Tsung says flawless victory, even though art lands a couple blows on Goro. And despite being based off a super violent and bloody franchise, the fights are kind of tame. But does any of that stop me from loving this movie? I don't think so. Plus, as a fan of WMAC The Masters, it was awesome seeing Robin Power Star Shao play Liu Kang and Hakeem the Machine Alston play the fighting monk. Three. I love this movie. The acting isn't the best, and the plot is ridiculous. Like, the villain wants to sell these sunglasses that'll turn the rarer into a karate master, but it only works on a pre-programmed group of people whose fight data have been downloaded to them. So essentially, they won't work on anyone else. He specifically starts DOA to acquire bite data from the winners, but he gets his butt handed to him when he fights one of the losers because he didn't download her data. But none of that matters because this movie is awesome. And let me tell you my favorite part. Jamie Presley as Tina. She got absolutely shredded for this role. She trained in both kickboxing and Mai Tai. Then there's Kevin Nash as Bass. Anytime these two are on screen together, it's amazing. The movie may not be the best, but the characters are fun. And you'll be lying if you says some of these fight scenes didn't go hard, especially the one between Tina and Zack. Three. This movie is so bad. It's ridiculous, poorly written, the fight scenes are on par with the Power Rangers, but I don't care because all of it is amazing. And a big part of why I love it is this man, Robert Patrick as Kogashuko. The man doesn't just eat the scenery, he devours it in a buffet of awesomeness. You can tell he's enjoying every moment he's on screen, and he's responsible for not just my favorite line in the movie, but one of my favorite lines in all of cinema. But I consider you like a son of a and like a son. I can always have another. The set pieces are over the top, taking place in a Los Angeles that's been ravaged by the big one. The movie follows Billy Lee and Jimmy Lee as they try to retrieve a golden dallion that would give the wearer complete control over the body and spirit. Like I said, the script isn't that great, but it's not like they had a lot to draw from. The game storyline is basically two brothers whose mutual girlfriend gets kidnapped go on a killing spree through the city to save her. So in an attempt to add depth, the writers added magic, a dystopian future, and a surprisingly good performance from our main cast of characters. The movie doesn't take itself too seriously. It's filled with bad puns and immature jokes, and that's why Kid Elijah loved it. And as I got older, I realized there were more jokes that I didn't pick up on. Huey. Lewis. Any news? Kid me had no idea who Huey Lewis in the news was, but adult me does and I find this joke's equal parts lame and hilarious. One. To say development on this movie was troubled would be an understatement. The director saw Super Mario Bros. as a video game and thought to themselves, you know what would be good? If we tried to make this like Blade Runner. The directors wanted to do for video games what Tim Burton did for comic books and superheroes, which would be admirable if it was a series like Castlevania or Metroid, but Mario? Not so much. There were constant rewrites during filming, so much so the actors didn't know what they would be filming when they got to set. Some of the cast even turned to drinking to be able to handle filming, while Dennis Hopper had a nearly three hour meltdown on set. Bob Hoskins, who played Mario, would even go on to say, 
All these rewrites get frustrating, so I don't do much research. My seven-year-old son is quite depressed about me playing Mario. He knows I can't even program a VCR, let alone play a game. How do I prepare for the role? I'm the right shape. I got a mustache. To the movie's credit, the sets and special effects are pretty impressive, but get overshadowed because the movie came out the same year as Jurassic Park. All in all, the movie is a mess, and it's nothing like the games. The writing is bad, and the plot is bad. But I still absolutely love it and will fight anyone who judges me. I know this movie is bad. I know some people hate this movie. This movie was so bad, Nintendo refused to let any movies be made off of their IPs for years. But there's just something about it. I still remember asking my mom to rent the movie for me and her giving me this kind of uncertain look as she said, are you sure? It's not gonna be like the game. To which I replied, that's okay, mother. They're the Mario brothers. Jumping the pain, they're not the ones that get on the game. Okay, maybe I didn't say that. And maybe one of the reasons I love this movie has to do with the fact that no matter what, for some reason, whenever I was homesick, this movie was somehow always on TV. The story is weird, but I submit you this. Super Mario Bros. The Movie was ahead of its time. Now hear me out, hear me out. In the age of YouTube short films, releasing these darker and often ridiculous takes on well-known child-friendly franchises and getting millions of views, imagine if Adi Shankar released this movie today on YouTube. I think in today's cynical world, the film would have done at least a bit better. Love it or hate them, that's my list of the best bad video game movies. Were there any that you liked as well? Let me know in the comments below.